Hello everyone, Jeff Holiday here, and I'm bringing you another GMO Myths video. Today we're going to be talking about a very common myth, which is people think that GMOs are completely wildly different from other types of crops and plants. This is absolutely not true. The truth of the matter is, is that all life from even the most tiny microbe to the most complex of things like human beings, all have basically the same relevant biological structure. That is, when you get down small enough, everything is essentially made of the same basic components. And this usually confuses a lot of people because they don't understand how genetics work. For instance, I am 50% banana, so are you. So is your mom, so is everybody that you know. But that isn't to say that we are actually fruit. That is to say that there are common traits, there are common basic components that make up all living things. And there's a really easy way to clear up a lot of this problem, but it's something that most people who are anti-GMOers will not do. Here, I'll demonstrate. You pick up a book, and you read it. So with so many biological similarities between even just people and pill bugs, or people and bananas, or bananas and papayas, or any number of these different things, it's kind of strange to think that somehow there is something that's totally unnatural. The truth of the matter is, GMOs are just as natural as anything else. So to make this a little bit easier to understand, what we're going to do is we're going to break down organic, conventional, and GMO and we're gonna examine what makes these things what they are. But really, let's get back to genetics, because genetics is the, the meat and potatoes of this whole thing. And to really understand how GMOs can't be any different, you have to understand that all DNA is composed of the same four basic chemicals. And the sequence of arrangement for these four basic chemicals makes a blueprint for what the organism is going to be. Now, you can only ever make this with these four basic chemicals. You can change their order and thereby changing the actual organism itself, sure. But for the most part, it's perfectly natural. There is nothing bizarre about it and there's nothing more complex than that. How these then interact with each other, the more subtle nuances, which we're not gonna get into about genetics, they do play an important role, and they can make things extremely complex. But at the very basic, basic fundamentals, it's all the same. It's totally the same. So because of that, you have to understand that organic and GMO both are built using the same basic four nucleic acids. They're no different. They're exactly the same. That's just how it is. So with that in mind, let's look at the differences between organic and GMO. Organic touts itself as the most natural of foods because it doesn't use any synthetic pesticides. It doesn't use any non-traditionally from the earth methods in which to cultivate the crop and to grow it. That's actually not accurate whatsoever, but that is what they tell you. The problem with this is, is they actually include things that are genetically modified. Now we can make the case that anything that's been touched by man has been genetically modified, and people do it all the time. Cows are vastly different than they were before. Chickens are a lot more plump because of selective breeding. We've made the banana actually edible. We've made corn edible. We've turned these crops into something that we can consume, and we've done it very carefully over hundreds, sometimes thousands of years. And if that's not modifying something, if that's not guiding and engineering an organism into something else, well, I really don't know how you want to define it. But with GMOs, we can do it so much more fast, which that's just kind of the nature of how it is. That's why it was done. But for the sake of argument, let's go ahead and say, just because we cultivated something doesn't make it genetically modified. Okay, fair enough. We'll proceed from there. It's not accurate, but we'll proceed from there. Here's a question for the class. Would you consider taking a seed and bombarding it with radiation modifying it, forcing a mutation by blasting it with radiation, like Peter Parker becomes Spider-Man. Wouldn't you call that kind of unnatural? Wouldn't you call that actually modifying something? Yet we have mutagenic food all over the place. Ruby red grapefruit is a very good example. And that is organic. That's totally organic. Somehow that actually makes sense that we can take this radiation and blast it to unnatural levels to force mutate something like a goddamn Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, and we can still slap an organic label on it. 
How does that make any sense? All right, so maybe we're not quite on the right track here. Let's think about instead, um, let's look at GMOs. Let's look at how GMOs are made. Traditionally, there are two types of ways. One is with a bacteria that acts as a virus to basically take this chunk of, this small chunk of DNA and introduce it into this other DNA. It uh, infects it, if you will, which allows it to then be further cultivated and we urge all the traits that we want and we get rid of the traits that we don't and we try and make this healthy plant that will perpetuate itself and we have a new species that we make. The other is to use what's called a gene gun, which sounds scary, but really all it's doing is firing little gold pellets coated in the DNA that they want to change into this plant to try and force change it through that. Now, all of these seem really strange. In fact, they seem really scary. And I understand that they seem scary because I used to be anti-GMO as well. But from my handy little bookshelf here, there's another little book I'd like to show you. It's called Frankenstein. Frankenstein's monster is a classic tale that I think is wonderfully appropriate for this situation because Frankenstein's monster was not evil, it was just misunderstood, and people feared it for no reason and tried to hunt it down and destroy it. Much like uh, anti-GMO activists, actually. But I digress. So making a GMO is basically forcing a change of DNA coding structure into a plant or a yeast or a bacteria or whatever. That's fine. All right. Well, organic doesn't do that, right? Actually, yeah, it does. 8,000 years ago, the sweet potato was created, and it was created because a bacteria got inside a variety of wild potato, and its infection caused an actual genetic change. Nature did it. Nature genetically modified it. This is just basic science. It did exactly the same thing that human beings do on purpose now, and it did it randomly, wild in nature. Nature in and of itself is not a benign entity. Nature is a dynamic system that's constantly trying new things. And the, the genome, the DNA of species, of you and me and plants and dogs and cats and all of that, is just rolling dice. Rolling dice and seeing what works and what will survive and what has the adaptability to perpetuate itself. There is no nature has a plan or nature is the perfect designer. Nature is a, a playing field. It's, uh, it's gambling. It's dynamicism and chaos. It's beautiful. It's amazing in how it works. So in a weird way, the more I try and figure out what the difference is in organic farming versus GMO farming, they really start to break down and it comes down to basically pesticides. That's really, really the determining factor, which we'll cover again in more videos to follow. However, there is also that whole conventional farming. And what is conventional farming? Well, conventional farming is basically just farming that we have evolved and adapted over the centuries into what we have now. We've carefully cultivated hybrid crops. We've uh, selected for traits the juiciest, the biggest tomato, or uh, the most hardy plant that will grow in some desolate part of the world. This is really how it's all worked, and it's worked fine so far. There have been problems along the way, but none of them had anything to do with genetic modification. And conventional still uses synthetic pesticides, whereas organic will only use organic pesticides. And I also am looking very forward to giving you a video on organic pesticides, because that's some of the nastiest shit out there. So that's it for episode two of GMO Myths. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any topics that you would like me to broach on some of my future videos, please leave a comment. I absolutely love to get feedback. And if you have any questions for me or would like to comment on my pretty bitchin' new house, I would appreciate that as well. I hope you all have a great day, and I'll see you again next time. Bye. Hello, my name is Jeff Holliday, and I make videos on science and skepticism. Evil hmm. biotech. Sometimes I play video games. Break yourself! Hmm. And sometimes I'm just goofing off. If you like anything that I do, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like that. And don't forget to check out my other channels. Thanks. I gotta tell you, man. I'm really liking this house and like how this all turned out. It's like Trashterpiece Theater. <laughs> yeah, man. That's awesome. My fine glass of scotch. <laughs>